Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Rooster Podcast. This week brought to you by Me Undies. Thanks to Me Undies for being the presenting sponsor on this episode of the Rooster Podcast. You've heard Gus obsess over me, his Me Undies. You've heard him talk about how they're three times softer than cotton and come with fun new prints each month. But there's been a big, exciting update on the Me Undies front. They just updated their membership with a massive upgrade. Each month, Me Undies will release a new exclusive print that only members can get. These could be collaborations with artists, brands, or other unique designs you are going to definitely want to have. Members will also pay less for everything on the MeUndies website with special member pricing. Membership comes with no strings attached. You can switch styles, skip the month, or cancel at any time. You're a big MeUndies enthusiast, aren't you too, Barb? I sure am. I actually just got some new pairs. Did you? One has sloths on them. Really? I mean, they change them out quite a bit? Yeah. But you know what I found out the other day? Am I allowed to? You go for it. Sales who receives our MeUndies for us, they've been hoarding them. Is that what happens? They've been, that's they've what, been that's hoarding what's going them. on. People are hoarding the MeUndies. They're like, well, we wanted to get like a bunch to give you all at once. I was like, no, what is that bullshit. Mean? <laughs> like they were going to save it up for like a party or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> well, MeUndies has a great offer for our viewers of the Rooster Podcast. For any first time purchasers, when you purchase any MeUndies, you get 15% off and you get free shipping. It's a no-brainer. To get your 15% off your first pair, free shipping, and 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash Rooster Teeth. That's MeUndies.com slash Rooster Teeth. Very well done. You guys put, like, you always, always put hashtags at the end of the ads. What does that mean? Just read the hashtag. Is that like a Twitter thing? Yeah. No, it's not a hashtag. It's just, it's just five hashtags. <laughs> read the hashtag. <laughs> There's no tags. Read it's it. just it's the hashes. Easy. It's just the hashes. Or ha pound, 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 pound. Hash, 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 hash. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, listen, that's the first time I've ever heard a MeUndies ad that didn't have the words modal. Or. Mi micro modal. Be what do they use? Beechwood to make it or something? How do you qualify something being three times softer than something else? Like, how, how much softer am Surveys. I? How, how much softer yeah, like, is this t-shirt than this table? Are you picking up, like, sandpaper and underwear and being like, oh, this is definitely three times softer than this? Is it, is it thread count? Oh, maybe. Oh. That's that's a quantifiable, you know, thing. But you can have. But I don't know. If, I don't know metal. What, yeah, sure. That wouldn't be soft. How do you how, how do you classify whether or not something is soft, Gavin? Squishy. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> give it a little. Give it a little squish and see what happens. I assume they're comparing other. What about the other sponsors? Underwear. And Who, what, and what's your name? Oh, also we have other sponsors here. Me undies, and then what's the other one? Dollar, no, Dollar Shave Club back this week. Thank you very much. We should probably introduce ourselves. I'm Bernie. Going the other way this time. I'm Barbara. I'm me undies. <laughs> I'm Chris. Oh, that's screw that screwed me up. No, don't come back to me. I'm not going to do that. Everything's backwards, <laughs> and Gus is gone. I don't know what we're doing. I've sort of forgotten how to do it. You don't know how to do the podcast. Do you? Do you rely on Gus when you show up here? He's my anchor. In what way? Am I not your anchor? No, because sometimes you're gone. Oh. You're sometimes gone. Gus is my constant. Why like is Gus not here, Eric? Do you know? No. No, we don't know. <laughs> oh, no I know knows. why. Why? Because he's going to London this week, so he obviously needed to take all of Monday off. Right. But that's next weekend. That's it's, this weekend. It's I'm this coming weekend. <laughs> yeah, well, me too. Well, yeah. he'll also take off time after he gets back because he has to decompress. Yeah. Oh, also, great job adding the RTX London bumper here. They were ready Ooh. to go. That's yeah. this weekend. Yeah. Who's going? I'm going. Chris, are you going? No, I'm not. Oh, are you really not going? No, I'm not going. Well, don't be like Chris and go to RTX <laughs> London if you live in London. Did you, you just be better not, than Chris? You didn't buy a ticket? Uh, I didn't buy my ticket in time. <laughs> <laughs> Think of what you could have been enjoying if you had bought it on time or right now at RTXLondon.com. Speaking of needing I'm needing time to decompress, I sent Dan an email. Dan was recently here and then he went home. Oh, he's gone already? Yeah, he I'm left. I'm pissed, by the way. I feel well, like he just showed up. Hold on. Okay. But I sent him an email. I was like, can you just look at this thing and tell me if it's all right in an email? And he said, oh, I've only just got back. I need a few days to decompress. To he read an email. an email? He had to read a, like a paragraph and then reply with yes or no. <laughs> what was? <laughs> I imagine but he read, like, wait, but he read it to tell you. He saw it coming. He's like, I can't deal with that right hey, now. Hey, Gavin, it's weird how easy it is to respond to an email, yes or no, huh? Yeah, it's really easy. Well, where are you going with that, Bob? Are you paying him to respond <laughs> to these emails? Because I mean, I'm assuming it's a slow mo guys thing. I'm sure you're not just yeah. writing a personal email. Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't just like. I oh, Dan miss you a lot. Uh, <laughs> I don't have time to respond. I, need, I, I can't deal with that right now. Do you want to be friends forever? Yes or no? <laughs> That's all I well, need. Did, is yes or no? Did he think that he needed to do whatever task was spoken about in the email? I mean, he knew what he knew. I was requiring a re response from him. 
But like, is he like, oh, I need to decompress before we do this or before I respond? No, just before he reads the email. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he can take the time to write that he's not going to read the email. I know, I'm, I'm, like, I'm a bit of a hypocrite in this because I don't, I mean, I read the email. That's so what I'm getting just at. Just don't reply to him. Because you do. Have you ever replied to an email saying you're not going to reply to this email? Because <laughs> that's what Dan did. <laughs> but that, how, that, important, that, how important was it for you to get Dan's approval on whatever it was? Yeah. This one was pretty important. Was it? Yeah. So it was like, it was business related. Yeah, it was business. Gotcha. The, the, the only one that really upsets me when people won't reply is when it's travel related. Mm. That fucking bugs me. Well, there's, there's like a flight on hold. Yeah, and then they'll like they'll they'll finally write back and go, yeah, that's good. It's like that ticket expired two days ago, <laughs> yeah. so you're on your own. At but this that's point. exactly what you do. Like you will reply to emails that you know have expired and are completely irrelevant. But you'll reply just to give the illusion Maybe. that yeah, that you're replying to stuff, and you're like, yeah, yeah. I know I've done that. I usually call it out if I do it though. My favorite, you know, you do that in person too. This is my favorite thing Bernie does. Where you'll be having a conversation with him, he'll look down to like maybe answer something on his phone. I do what? And let's say I'm just like, oh, what day are we going to that thing? And like, he'll be quiet for a bit. And then you're like, so, um, like you'll just change the subject and you'll go, Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like uh, five minutes after I asked the question. Well, I feel like I you store, run. I store it up. I store it up. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say. I treat you like I would treat one of my Sims. I where it's like, he's in the queue, and, it, and yeah. my, my question's like the fifth most important thing. <laughs> and then when the red X goes over the phone, I put it down, then I look yeah. up and say, club sandwich. <laughs> yeah, right? But I feel like sometimes I can, because you know, if you click something in the queue, it like deletes it. And you're, so sometimes I can delete stuff from your queue by going, hey! Hey! And then it like distracts you, and my thing moves closer. Right. And then I drown in the swimming pool. Because <laughs> <laughs> I like remove the ladder. Yeah, that's right. Or piece his pants. I was thinking about The Sims just the other day. It's weird that it comes up because I was... I feel like I'm cleaning up in my house constantly. And I had to talk to all the other people about it. You have this. a very clean house. Thanks, but it's like, fuckers, put your dishes <laughs> in the dishwasher. Don't just put a, a dirty... Like, JD's gotten into making rice. He makes rice. Oh, Uncle Ben? Like, that's good. Yeah. The most cooking. messy thing. But though. if you don't... It is cooking. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, I, I mean, I never cooked anything when I was a kid. <laughs> what, was the, what was the one thing you knew how to cook? Nothing? Eggs. Cereal? Uh, fish? <laughs> Cereal! <laughs> you cooked your fish? Yeah, yeah, I'm an adult now. What do you mean oh. as a kid, yeah. What do you do with rice now? Uh, I all boil it, and then like, uh, well, you, you boil the water and you dump the rice in, and then, you know, it becomes rice. <laughs> well, like, the, the grains, the it grains. Started, it started off as rice, just so you know. <laughs> it was the rice grains, the it, it, they start off as grains, right? <laughs> if you eat a load of raw <laughs> rice, would it expand like, in, like it would kill a pigeon? If what? If you eat raw <laughs> rice. Like, Don't you... they say not to throw rice at, at weddings? For yeah, that? yeah, because they because hmm. because pi pigeons or birds eat it. It's it's not, I know it's a myth, but I think that's oh. why they started saying it. Damn, probably because you want people to clean up their rice. Now they use what paper confetti. How is that worse than or hands? How is that better? <laughs> she wants up throwing Woo! hands up. <laughs> yep. Would you be annoyed if you got married and walked out of the church and everyone was just doing jazz hands? They do bubbles now too. Bubbles. That's uh, the Sparkles. bubbles would annoy That's me. Get someone's Jazz eye. hands would be like, "You're all insane. What's wrong with you?" <laughs> it's like clapping, but um, in sign language. Yeah, I like this. Is this, <laughs> is this how you clap in sign language? Yep. Really? Yeah, wait, wait. some of that. Why can't you just think? Because they can't hear it. It's, but they you, still you see, see it. it. It's it's really if your hands it. are down here, like you can't see me, it looks like I'm jacking myself off. But if you have them up here. Clap, hold your hands up higher like and clap. This? It's still a visual representation this, of clap. This, this is just applause. <laughs> I'm with Chris. Of some type. I'm with All Chris. Right. You you there was a I didn't make it up. Like, how do you point in sign language? <laughs> how do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, it's like you just do the same thing and then the person sees it. That's it. I mean, okay, this so is. Why don't we all do our version? We're, of by clapping. the way, if you're listening to audio podcasts, <laughs> apparently in sign language, waving your hands up, even with your face, and waving right, them back and we'll, forth. We'll cut to the wide. Right. You two do real clapping. And and Barbara and I will do sign language clapping. Ready? Three, mm -hmm. two, one. Well, Bernie's not doing it. No, I was gonna wait for the close up and look like I was jacking off. I think it's that, because that if you're if you're me. in an audience and like there's a lot of people, like you don't tend to see this or this. But if you see like a bunch of hands going like this, that's true. You you're usually applaud people who are performing. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Like I've never clapped to the audience that I was in. Well, yeah, but yeah, how do you communicate yeah. to the entire audience? If you guys feel like you want to celebrate the end of this performance, don't do this. Do this. I also, well, I'm well, assuming because they would just know. Yeah. I, oh, I guess if the entire audience. Well, if you're going to see like a deaf play. Yeah, but hmm, where you knew the play. performance would. Yeah, like you just go to the school death. of deaf and they're doing a Shakespeare play. That why why wouldn't that happen? Well, because 
then okay, it, so it, I think this means you're hearing applause. I don't know if it's like <laughs> okay. Barbara's got a. I don't know. I'm trying here. to Google it. Okay, you're continue. hearing applause. What is that? That's not a. Word. You can't, there's no word for that even. What does that mean? Sign language applause notes. Applause can be signed a couple ways. Hearing applause refers to the type of applause hey. used by and for people who could hear and who are of the hearing community. Who, who would say that, Gavin? How was your big presentation? <laughs> Did you hear applause? I heard applause. I heard applause. <laughs> Maybe it should be more like this. The, then. the deaf guys like brag about it. <laughs> you hear the applause. So how would you say? So what is this? What is this? Because I know, it, like in little kids' schools now, I guess clapping is hurts some of the kids. So they wait. They, what? They, they'll snap. Go again. You know this, right? Chris went to a little kid school. I bet. <laughs> applause I hurts that. people's. What? No, I'm just saying. For some reason, they've eliminated applause. Maybe teachers are annoyed by it. Thank you. So applause. now we have some dude <laughs> in a crazy fucking tie <laughs> telling us that this is applause. What That's the, it. They have a YouTube what channel is, out. What is fire? <laughs> yeah, right? I'm assuming. I, I want to say it's something like this. Like I feel like I couldn't imagine a worse topic for an audio podcast. <laughs> oh, <than> sign language! <laughs> I literally can't imagine a worse topic. We hit the bottom of the barrel. That's it. I just feel like it's stupid that I know applause, but I don't know the emergency stuff. <laughs> like gunmen. No, you just run and scream. <laughs> like a screaming doesn't help either. Yeah. Well, you gotta hold your hands higher, otherwise they think you're applauding. <laughs> you, gotta go, you gotta go way high. I'll tell you what, I wish that, uh... Choking? For this? Yeah, choking's a good one. You know choking? Is that choking? You know thank you. You must know thank you in sign language. Right? Oh, I didn't know that. That's I feel it. like I once knew that. Forgot it. Now you can use it. Would you ever do that? Would there ever be a situation where someone's, like, waiting on you in a coffee shop, and they're hearing impaired? And you know that they are. Would you ever sign thank you? I'd probably be too embarrassed. You just wouldn't do it. I've done it to Uber drivers. I, I've done yeah. it. There's that uh, cafe that's in sta staffed entirely by hearing impaired people. And uh, does, is, is hearing impaired is that is that in itself offensive? Because th there's a culture around deafness, and uh, I can't say everybody who's deaf is in it, but they're very, very protective of deaf culture. And like, even the word deaf is an important word to use, I think. Like, that's maybe, maybe somebody word? can correct me on this. Yeah, like if I'm like trying to change it and say some other word, my Probably hearing impaired. Yeah, my, but, but, but I think actually they prefer the word deaf as opposed oh. to like anything else. Hmm. I think so. But um, yeah, there's a cafe down south uh, that uh, it's staffed entirely by deaf people. It's a deaf owner, so it's an all deaf staff. Have you been? Yeah, it's great. Hmm. It's great. And you, you don't, it's like you walk in and something's different. And I think because it's just like kind of like traffic on the roads is that it's a bunch of people just driving by themselves and then all of a sudden other people show up and then that causes traffic, right? But then that leads later in the day to even traffic slowdowns in certain parts of, it's like it cascades, right? So what I'm thinking is when they start their day at the restaurant, no one is, no one is talking out loud. Mm -hmm. So then customers come in and no one's talking out loud, so the customers don't talk out loud, but then you come in and there's more customers, and literally it's one of the quietest places I've- So it's I've, like traffic with electric cars. Yeah, exactly, a little huh. bit. But yeah. I just think like everyone just like, it's just a lower volume in there, because people just like, don't start talking essentially. They don't want to be the one to like, break the silence. Yeah, like, right? Yeah. I mean, if, if you're in a room full of people and no one's talking, you don't just start like, yeah, 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 yeah. you yeah. know? Maybe I do, but <laughs> people do. We would. But, uh, and it wasn't, I know that probably a lot of, we have a huge school for the deaf in Austin. I think we talked about that, that last time we talked about uh, this restaurant. But uh, I would imagine a lot of their customers and, cl and clientele come from the school for the deaf. But mm -hmm. even when I was in there, I was noticing this phenomenon of everyone being quiet and people were not signing to each other at their tables. A couple were, but not enough to make it as quiet as it was in that restaurant. So it was really interesting. I love well, that place. Maybe they just didn't, didn't, didn't want to say anything. That's what I'm saying. Right. Because well, also, it's a quieter restaurant, you so you're also, less likely to, like, go nuts. But also, even deaf people wouldn't always be yakking. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Right? They might just be eating. Like, I don't talk right. a lot when I eat. But even when people talk, they again, they just like, very, very, very I was going to ask if the people working there, since they're hearing impaired, are probably better at reading lips. So if you do have a conversation at your table, they, oh. could, they could just essentially listen to your conversation. I assume everybody's listening all the time anyway. I'm a loud motherfucker. I actually had an old lady correct me in a coffee shop. Whoa. Come over and tell me I was being too loud. Really? She did it in like that old school Texas lady way, like that, oh, bless your heart kind of way. 
she came up to me and she goes, I just want to say, <laughs> oh. like, I was like, yeah, what's up? And she goes, I just want to say, you have a very impressive voice. It really carries. <laughs> and I was like, are you telling me that I'm being loud? She goes, I just, I don't, maybe I don't think you realize how uh, much your voice projects. And I was just like, oh. okay. I always said, well, I think you're telling me to keep it down. I'll keep it down. That is the perfect way to do to, it, though. To this day, I don't know if she was like being like passive aggressively sarcastic to Sounds the like end, it. End degree, <laughs> or if she was just a nice old lady. It was probably a bit of both. Yeah. Like she nice was just lady. like, man, his voice is really loud, but I wish he would shut the fuck up. Yeah. Is that, is that something, though, to be like complimentary <clears throat> of? Like, wow, you're a really loud person. I think it's more of like you have a very good voice and a, like a, pro a good projection on your voice because that is a skill. Okay. You yeah. could be a good performer. It's commanding. Yes. Yeah, John and I talked about this, I think, in the game time we did. We, talked about, we both have a theater background, so we tend to get super fucking loud. Did it ever come out? I'm like, no, it's gonna, that's going to be the first one that comes out, probably. Probably. It makes sense. I want to put out a video when we go to RTX London, just because it's like the whole weekend is like RTX London stuff, and like there's a lot of people that don't get to go to live events, and certainly most people aren't going to be able to travel internationally from Canada or US or Australia to go mm -hmm. to... The UK to go to RTX London. I understand, but uh, <laughs> Chris, do you, you want to talk about it? How did you find out you're not going to RTX London? Um, I think whenever I didn't get the email that said <laughs> you want to go to RTX London. But did you know that other people got the email? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I went, I went last year. Yeah, and so it's like people sometimes rotate. Yeah. So you're saying you haven't done anything in a year that warrants your appearance at RTX London? Well, was it just at uh, Fan Expo? Well. Like that? That happened mm -hmm. to us though. We got cut out. I got cut out of RTX Sydney essentially, since RTX Sydney is all a let's play event this year. Oh, oh, right. Well, so that's all. It's all game. Look, look at Barbara's same out. face. She's like, hmm. Yeah. But I didn't know that was happening. Like I, I had heard we were talking about that, but then it was. I probably find out about it before most people did, but then I was like, oh, I guess I'm not going to RTX Sydney this year. Bernie, you could do whatever you want. You Should I? Can I crash your uh, let's you, play life? With how your, many let's plays have you been in? Video game. Yuck em ups. It's also, I don't think technically a Let's Play Live. I think it's more of like a Chima Hunter Live, a Chima Hunter focus. Well, I mean, I have been in the background of a couple of Let's Plays. You've been like, on and also all the podcast Let's Plays. Yeah, you've yeah. also been on Off Topic. Oh, some fucker said that we copied, uh, we copied a Chima Hunter by doing Let's Plays. The first Let's Play was a podcast Let's Play, it was a drunk tank Let's Play. Now, I know, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say the first Let's Play was your. Is this something Watchmen? we've argued about before? What's no. this? No. I, what, I just, the first Let's Play? I just remember there was a time where Jeff was cutting a guide, and I and I said we should record the audio live as we try and get the achievement. And that was before the podcast Let's Play that we did. But we didn't call them Let's Plays back then. No, it was just, we. I used to call them live commentary because I didn't know the name Let's Play. Yeah. But then Jeff and I did a Left 4 Dead 1 and a Halo 1. Halo 3. Tank Dropper might have been the first one. Tank Dropper? What yeah. was the, didn't you do a Watchmen one? Yeah, I think that came a bit later. Yeah. Oh, was it really? Mm. One of those arcade classics? Remember when there used to be a difference between retail games on the Xbox? Yeah. And, then and there'd be arcade? less gamer score and definitely cheaper. And now it's just like you can have what used to be a $10 game and sell it for 60 if you want. Yeah. Can I tell you something? I'm ready for a new Xbox. I'm ready. I want one to come out next E3. This one wasn't good. No. What was the it most was bad. recent one? No. The Xbox One. One? How long has yeah. it been? Like one X? Four years? Three years? Uh, so, well, it depends if you consider the Scorpio to be a new console. I don't think so. I don't think so either. I mean, it runs the same games, but enhanced. I agree. But it's not. Well, <clears throat> the Xbox One also runs the same games now, essentially, as the Xbox 360. So. I guess it's a weird half generation thing. All I know is uh, Spider-Man came out last week. Anybody played it? Yeah, I've started playing it. I feel like I have played it vicariously through everyone on Twitter. Everyone talking <laughs> yeah. about it nonstop. It's really fucking amazing. I mean, it's really, really amazing. And everyone's talking about some Sega or PlayStation 2 Spider-Man game. It's like, oh, I played that as a kid. I'm like, I played like the Atari 2600 <laughs> version of Spider-Man. And uh, this thing is really incredible. Like just swinging through the city, I could do that all day. Like just that core mechanic. Along. It's so much fun, dude. It's, it's so much fun. It's weird because I feel like so many, you know, games that are based off like movies and, and comic book stuff end up just not being, I don't know. Kind of, eh. Yeah, adaptations are always kind of a hit or miss just in general, right? Yeah. You never know. Like, um, it seems like movies do it better than anybody. I guess movies and TV. Like Game of Thrones, Harry Potter. It was a pretty safe bet. Felt like those were going to be pretty good movies. You never know. Yeah. Maze Runner. People like that Maze Runner book. Made a Maze Runner movie. I don't know if they like that. I've been a big fan of all the Lego games. 
that have taken big properties and made them into Lego games, like Lego Batman. <clears throat> yeah. I think there's low stakes there, though, because it's like if you make a, ba a bad Lego game, you're yeah. like, well, it's a Lego game. But, you know, but then you it has a great, like a chance to surprise you. Yeah. Then you're like, oh, well, that was really good for a Lego game. Yeah. You know, I'm super weird, too, because I've played, my kids were the perfect age when those games started coming out. Like the first Lego Star Wars, which was uh, the first Lego Star Wars was all prequel. Right. And then they did the original series was the second one. Which I guess makes sense in the order of the episodes, but it doesn't make sense like chronologically in the way they came out. Um, but I, I'm kind of like a weird purist when it comes to those Lego games and the Lego animations. Because there was a point in time when the characters didn't talk. Everything was just like hand motions With or like, like grunts and stuff like that. Nope. There was no like, it was more like, <clears throat> you know, Luke would point at this little practice droid or whatever and go like this and hand solo and then throw it at him or something like that and that that's all they did now they now they have full voice actors and everything else i just so, love but nobody remembers like the old version of the lego yeah, stuff where no one talked i just love the effects of everything in a lego game where like something explodes and it explodes into tiny little lego pieces yeah, yeah. i love that mechanism it's a way of being really gruesome without having any gore <laughs> yeah because mm -hmm. yeah. you can break some of the, the little pieces that make up the thing yeah they actually do a really good job i think of like building those things in Lego and then putting them in the game. Yeah. Did you ever play? I was just thinking about this recently. Did you ever play Enter the Matrix? The MMO? No, that was Matrix Online. Enter the Matrix was I... the one that had a ton of extra footage. It came out around the same time as Matrix Reloaded. It was a game. But it oh, was yeah, a game. It was an Xbox and it game, had right? like an hour of actual movie with all the actual Matrix actors that they shot specifically for the game. No. It was like one of the most expensive games made at the time. It was like $20 million. And the game actually wasn't very good, and, but there was like a cool hacking mechanic. But I don't know of a time where a game has been better integrated with a film. Like in Matrix Reloaded, <coughs> there's the bit where Morpheus and one of the agents are fighting on the, on the big truck and it crashes into another one and they go flying forwards. But at some point there was like a, a driving level in the end of the Matrix where you have to drive and like catch Morpheus. And in the movie, you actually see that character do all that stuff. So you, you like learn stuff all around the movies, like stuff would happen in the movie, like, oh, wonder what happened over there, and then you got to play it, and it was really cool. And I haven't seen anything like it since. Wow, that's really awesome. Yeah. It's well, just a lot of effort put into a story of the game and not the actual mechanic yeah. of the game. See, and I'm like in the key demographic, like when they make that game, I'm the guy, you know, when they list out all the properties, loves the Matrix, is a dude yeah. like in his mid-20s or whatever, probably when that game came out. And it's just, I was, I never played it. I never even thought about playing that game. It was cool. I mean, the MMO, I think I played for about two seconds. The game it was, was Monolith, right? That made that because same people that they made had a Matrix Pan MMO. Yeah, same people that made Panics. Am I thinking about this right, that dude? I'm starting to drive myself crazy here. Let me go ahead and talk. I'll look up a Matrix MMO. You mean Fear? Uh, yeah, they made Fear, which I think we made, you panics. made Panics. We made Panics <laughs> based on that. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I did not even catch that. Yes, Matrix MMO, The Matrix Online. I think I did play under The Matrix, but I don't remember anything about extra footage. The only so the two, the main characters, you can pick two characters, one's Niobe and one's Ghost. And I played the game before I saw the movies. So when I saw them in the movie, I was like, oh yeah, that's, that's my boy Ghost. He has like two lines in the yeah. whole movie. But he has like a hundred thousand lines in the game and it's crazy that that actor... And I was wondering, did they shoot that for the movie and then cut it? And then think, oh, we'll put it in a game. Or did they specifically shoot all that for the game? I have no idea. Hmm. I wouldn't put it past him though. The yeah. Wachowskis are pretty forward thinking. They yeah. shot a lot of stuff. Shot a lot of stuff. I recently watched The Matrix 2 and 3 again. Was it with Blaine? No. Oh, I watched it without him. Uh. <laughs> Good, he's not here. It's fine. Yeah, he's in Japan right now. I you're, watched him with safe. Dan. Did but you watch him with Dan? So he's like the British Blaine, right? I was supposed to see Dan when he was in town. I'm sad. We invited you out and you said no. You invited me out on a night I happened to have other plans. Oh, well, yeah. All right. And then I said, but I want to make sure that like, I get to hang out with you guys before he goes back. And you're like, yeah, no problem. And then, and then I got back, and then I was like, ready for drinks? Oh, you did get back? I got back. Well, and to then... be fair, we were in Oklahoma, and then he went home. Spoiler. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> When's he back? Oh, uh, probably a couple of weeks. Okay. Cool. Will he be at RTX London? Is, is he a special guest? I mean, not officially, but I'm sure he'll be there. Really? I don't think. He might. It's a, it's a week away, so decompression time. Not even. <laughs> I've never been able to get anyone in events to care about Dan, so I eh. think Dan's feeling it, and he's just like, Bleh. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's uh, I think it's because they think that you'll pay for them to go. <laughs> they don't have to put it on their budget. They can, you know, they can add other people who 
deserve to go like to RTX London, like Chris. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I don't want Dan to go to RTX London because he'll need more days to decompress yeah, no, right? <laughs> and not respond to me. I would like to see Dan decompressing. Like, what? That's a video into itself. Like, it's just Dan <laughs> sitting in the middle of his living room. No, I know what it is. <laughs> it's him having a tea party with all of his stuffed animals. That's me. That's my vision oh, yeah? of Dan decompressing. Yeah. Dude, I would go to that decompression. That sounds like a fucking blast <laughs> to Hell me. Hell yeah. <laughs> Although, I gotta say, I'm not gonna name any names, uh, but... I, my friends who live in LA, they're they're kind of going over the edge. They're like Foy? No, oh. just like to that lunacy, that California lunacy. You probably follow a lot of these people. A lot of our friends all went to a fucking birthday party for a dog this weekend. Yeah, I saw that. That's too much. That's not uncommon. Well, I feel with LA people. Is it a birthday party <laughs> for a dog? Uh, is it just an excuse to have a party? Yes. No, that's one way to look at it. There was a lot of work <laughs> that yeah. went into this dog birthday party. Look, and people, I know people really like their dogs. Other people brought dogs and it was just a big dog party. It was right. awesome. I, didn't I feel it, like I wish people I did. need more reasons to hang out. And that's the perfect reason. So, oh, what about the dogs? <laughs> Let's do it. So, But also, just hang out. Right? Just do that. Just have a party and hang out. I feel like it, maybe in LA people are busier and, and need a reason. Gavin, if I'm having a party this weekend and it's just a party, come on over and have drinks. Or I tell you, you're going to come to a dog birthday party. Are you more likely to come to the dog birthday party? Well, I don't have a dog, so probably less likely. If you said it was a cat party, I'd be all about it. You don't have a dog, so that's it? If you go to, a, if I invite you to a kid's birthday party because you don't have a kid, you wouldn't go? Is that thing Why would I go to a kid's birthday? <laughs> oh, I guess it's Jamie's not... birthday or something. Oh, yeah, I would go to that. Yeah, right? Yeah. It's weird with the dog for some reason. <laughs> the, dog, the dog makes it's, it weird. It's odd. It's an odd thing. I feel like you feel like you, you don't belong there, you know? It's At a like, dog birthday? Yeah, like if you don't have a dog, you'd be like, oh, sorry, I didn't bring my dog. But then dog. you get to like, play with all the other dogs. I mean, I, I, I'd love to go to a dog party. No one's ever invited <laughs> me to a dog party. We're having one in London. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's what this whole lead-in was for. It was one of those segues. <laughs> I mean, would it be wrong to buy a dog just to go to a dog party? Yeah, that would be everything about that's wrong. Well, can you not go to a dog? Is was like swingers where a guy can't go by himself? <laughs> you got to bring a girl. <laughs> or going to Chuck E. Cheese, you got to bring a kid. That's a rule. Also, what if the dogs you get too many dogs in my place? They like chomp on each other. By the way, Chuck E. Cheese. Somebody <laughs> pointed out they went through the system at Chuck E. Cheese by which. Parents will arrive or adults will arrive with children and they mark them uh, with, I think it's like an invisible ink, but then they have a different marker for each pairing so that they can Whoa. see they match when they leave. So if someone tries to take another kid out that right. doesn't belong to them. They just, they have that system in place. How and do they mark the parent? They, with a little stamp. How What's do they the, mark the kid? Same way. No, what is wait, the question? Wait, no, is it but like, why would they, why would he be invisible? <laughs> well, who's invisible? Did you say like you need... Oh, is it just a stamp that's colored? You think they made the kid invisible? Oh, I thought you were saying like you were wiping like <laughs> like ultraviolet ink on them that would only yes. show up under. Oh, is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. Invisible ink. Invisible ink. Right. Not invisible. What child. I'm saying is, if you're marking people and they are aware of it, why does it need to be invisible? Because you don't want people putting the mark on themselves to match the kids. Or oh, like if so if, they know like oh I gotta get the butterfly stamp and exactly yeah. or I can draw number six on my arm. Yeah. So, so can you just so, get invisible ink? Do they just have pro Gavin? No system's perfect, <laughs> dude. I mean, I don't know what to say. Some people are gonna slip through the cracks. You know dude. what's the perfect system? Just take a photo. <laughs> that is a good system. Huh. It's a good system. Well, but then no, no, on no, the spot Photoshop it. Oh, I, I, you're gonna be think. like you have to go to you're like you have to get a pro like a no like when you get there they take a photo of you and the kid. I don't know. And then they could sell them at the gift shop. That also feels, <laughs> that also kind of like, that also feels weird. Because you have thousands of pictures of children? Oh, no, it's also, it's like, hey, you're here for the party. Here, take your security photo. As opposed to a little stamp, it's just like the kids are having a good time. They have no idea that the system's even been branded. Place. Yeah. Makes but someone was pointing harsh. out that that system is better than the system we have for separating parents and children, like, in custody. It's like, we oh, can't figure out... Yeah, Chuck E. Cheese is doing a better job. <laughs> Bring him in. Than the bu bureaucrats are. Get in the head of Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> Bring him down. See they if could put a Chuck E. Cheese on the border. That's what they could do. This Did they it. reunite all those kids yet? No. Oh, so we got, are we working on that? Or like, what's happening? Yes. People are, people are working on it. And people are working hard to make sure that other people don't forget about it. Because it's super easy to forget about just about anything this week. Because there's always a new tweet. Or... Elon Musk smokes pot for some reason on camera, you know? Why is that a big deal if it's legal? Because uh, it's not. 
And I hear what you're saying. So for me personally, it's not. But he is the head of a public company that goes on a globally distributed and very popular podcast, the Joe Rogan podcast, and he smokes pot. And it's totally legal where he's doing it. There are places in the world where that's not illegal, and it makes people freak the fuck out. And sure enough, the Tesla stock dropped. I mean, where it's not legal. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So people, f- really people forget about it. I did a, I did a, a vlog where he talked about my friend's legal cannabis business in California, and there were people who said, "I will never watch her shoot content ever again because you talked about it." Yeah, because when we went and visited their her cannabis legal cannabis business, I mean, because I thought people would be curious about it. It is illegal in most places. It's illegal in most places. Yeah. It's illegal in Texas, where I live. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, but yeah, there was I was it, I was kind of shocked, Chris, by the number of people who were just like, "I'm out, bye." I'm actually surprised at how many places it is, it is legal in the states. Isn't it like 20 states or something close to that? It's, yeah, well, like in medically, I think it is, but yeah, I don't medically. know about like recreational. I think recreational. Canada, less. they kept telling us, and they were like, "Oh, you know, like you know, you guys should have come a month later. It's all uh, it's legal in Canada in yeah. October. Yeah, it's like the entire country is is." Is legal, I think. Is I that, think that I might actually make it harder for you to go back and forth. Barb. Really? Yeah. Oh, because they'll, they'll have stricter searches and stuff. Yep. Mm. They'll be tightening down. It's like tightening stuff up. Yeah. What are yeah. you at? What level are you at now? Of tightness? No. <laughs> of, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave it at that. <laughs> That's a good ender for that conversation. Okay. <laughs> nice. Uh, so the you were a Surf you. Jeff shirt. I, I see am. Babs. And uh, th- this was from the coop at RTX. It's a little windbreaker rain jacket thing. It's got that. I wore a sweater this week, and I was totally fine doing it's it. It's beautiful today. Yeah, outside. It's been nice. It's been nice. I got a sweater when I went to uh, Scotland, and then I had an excuse to wear it. You'll have you... an excuse in Sydney, or not uh, Sydney, uh, London. I won't be going. To, it'll be me and Chris hanging out at the dog party. <laughs> you want to have a dog party for RTX Sydney when these guys are fucking off? Let's go to. Let's go to. Let's have a dog party. Yeah, let's do it. All right, I'm, sorry, I, Chris, I'm, gonna, I'm putting it on the calendar right now. I'm February. Gonna... We're having a dog party. I'm gonna get a dog. If you don't do that and film it, I'll be disappointed. I don't, you, you don't get to see it. You get to you go see. Well, look at yeah. us on Instagram. Well, all your friends, yeah, they <laughs> made, they documented their dog party. Are you mad you didn't get invited to the dog party? What's the opposite of FOMO? <laughs> no, I'm not <laughs> mad about that. It's just I when I saw it, I was just like, I was like, oh, they're at a party, so and so's house. And I then, think then I was like, oh, it's a fun. I would say Eomo. <laughs> I'd say Jomo because the joy of missing out. Oh, that's there better. Was, I was gonna do excitement of missing out. Mm. There was, a, from what I understand, from what I understand, cursory glance at this, there was human treats and dog treats, like tables of like set up stuff. So like if you fucked Seems up. dangerous. Yeah. And I would totally fuck up, Barb. Well, yeah, because you would, I would everything. do everything. Like, like a bone meal cupcake or something like that. <laughs> I know I would do that. You ever had a dog biscuit? You had brothers. Yeah, but we had no dogs. I, I ate a lot of, I ate, I ate cat food, dog food. Yeah, I'm sure, just saying, I'm not, you didn't try it? I'm not <laughs> saying they fed your Are brother's we, dog biscuits. I'm saying that the fucking stupid brothers will make you eat anything when you're a kid Yeah, but that up. implies that my brothers would actually go and purchase something. That's true. Why did you eat cat food? Was it wet food? I no, ate dog was, biscuits. Was, I didn't have a dog. Yeah, was, I think it was, later. So I think I was trying to turn into a cat or something. I don't remember. Wait. What did you do? Wait, wait. Two conversations. Wait, we were lost over here. What are you talking about? Revisit. He asked why cat food. I said, I think I was trying to turn into a cat. He what ate, cat food? You ate cat food? He ate cat and dog when food. I was a kid, you know. Like, like regularly? Yeah. Not like regularly. He just <laughs> wants to try so, it out. So you had a cat? Yeah. Do you remember the cat being a human before you fed it? <laughs> no. But it so was why like, do you think it would work? You know, you're like did, six, you know. It's did like, you try well, giving the cat human food, seeing if it would No, I didn't think that would, but I thought if I ate cat food, I might, like, I think I saw it in an episode of Rugrats or something. I don't know. It made sense at the time. It, well, it, it was worth an experiment, you know? It's like. Yeah. I don't know. Was it though? Yeah, well, I, it was just cat food. And I, <laughs> okay. you know, I, I'm okay. What flavor? Uh, cat food. I don't know. No. Fish? <laughs> Do they, are there multiple flavors for cat food? Yeah, there's like, yeah, a, you get like chicken. Fish, yeah. chicken. I, I don't remember. I mean, I didn't think that much up into it. Uh, I was eating cat food. So yeah, that's true. like a thing. It's terrible. Yeah. I've, I've tried cat food. I've tried Alpo. Why, why is why everybody are you eating cat food? Try I, cat you, food? I just try to see what it tastes like, just like Chris. But you probably tried it in your 30s. No. I tried it when I was like 10. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, I ate a tender vittle. Do you know what that is? That's an old school cat food. I, no. I was thinking about too, it sucks to be a, a pet. I feel like- because, sure, you're on easy street, everything's good. But there's always that question of, if you could eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? Mm-hmm. And then you think, oh, that's hard because I get sick of it after like two weeks. But literally, no one said cat they food. eat the same thing every day. Every meal. So I guess I would pick cat food because clearly there's something <laughs> great about it's it. so fantastic. <laughs> 
I it's mean, like meat crackers. Yeah. That's like that's all they eat. Dog dog food, dry dog food, just like meat flavored crackers. It's actual meat in the food. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if a cat is eating chicken flavored biscuit, when was that a chicken? No, wait, what? You, if, what's he says cat like biscuit? Actual oh, like chicken a, in like chicken cat in food. Cat like, food. Like, dry food. <laughs> when you have biscuits, you your cat. <laughs> no, I'm, it's just meat. It's just chopped up chicken. Right, but like, if if chicken is in cat food, how long ago was that walking about? Oh, I don't know. It's, it's all uh, dried up. It's like they take the the extra chicken bits from like human food. They grind it all up and then add in like you know other stuff. They go to then, McDonald's and pick up all the old chicken McNuggets. Yeah, because I I mean I have like cans of chicken noodle soup in my cupboard where uh, when was that a chicken like two years ago maybe I'm still probably gonna eat it one day maybe i want to know when everything was walking do you know you don't that but I you want an no, extra date on it like date of death like yeah what was the time of death that'd be useful like when the guy in the white coat came in and said <laughs> chicken's dead all right it's 12 2 p.m on <laughs> thursday get the can out <laughs> or at least like a picture of that chicken what? what? No, you, nobody would want that. What do you think you are, Chuck E. Cheese? <laughs> <laughs> well, then at least you know how it was treated. Like, it's invisible ink on the they can. They take a picture of the chicken when it goes into the slaughterhouse. Yeah, like, like, I feel like most people would not want to see and visualize the animal they're about to consume. Well, maybe they shouldn't be eating an animal then. Yeah, maybe so. It's a good point. You know what I'm I want to look, like, I want to look my animal in the eye as I eat it. Whoa, well, that's weird. So you're, what are you eating then? If you're looking at it in the well, eye, you're not eating the well, eyes. Eating eyes. So you just you take off its eyes and so stop making out with it. Nah, just a picture. I don't want to like I'm stare into. Picturing you eat, look looking straight at a cow. It's like, are you lifting its leg up and chewing <laughs> on its leg? <laughs> I wonder how. Do you, do you think? Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Do you think, Gavin? Uh, in the apocalypse, and you're starving. Of course, you could. But do you think if you had to tomorrow, like you couldn't have meat again unless you killed it? And then cleaned it and prepared it. Do you think you'd ever eat meat again? No. I probably wouldn't eat chicken again. Because you got to chop the chicken's head off. There's something, there's something too small about a chicken killing it. <laughs> I feel like a cow, a cow, you just get the uh, no country for old men doofer, do it on the cow's head. Sure. And then just rip it open. Yeah, that seems way harder. But that's like a thing. That's not like, oh, let me quickly kill a chicken. I feel like with a cow, I'd be like, set aside a morning for it, really do it well. I think it that'd is, be the way to go. It, it, if you did it once, you probably wouldn't have to do it again for another like five, six months. Yeah. Just you just live, do what, like, live do in a what cow Jeff forever. did, where he bought half a cow and then. Did he end up doing that? He did, yeah. Did he go on the road trip with the dude? Where they, didn't they split, he split a cow with somebody else? I don't think he literally cleaved it in two, but no. <laughs> he did have half a cow and he had it in a freezer outside and then he had a power cut. <sighs> didn't, didn't smell good. You know, you know what you do? You have a dog party then. then you <laughs> eat all the all the leftover cow bits. It reminds me of my favorite Simpsons quote: "Half a cow, man." Oh, jeez. So Je Jeff, I'm not going to do anything. That was a good joke. <laughs> so Jeff has a freezer outside. Yeah. There's your cold box. You've been wanting one for years. Well, it's not out in the open. It's like in the. It was in the basement. He also wants it to be milk sized. I just literally just sat outside. I don't know. There's no, no air conditioning or anything. I asked for clarification. You said yes. You lied it wasn't, to me. It wasn't open to the sky. Okay. But it was a basement that was open. By the way, <clears> you know what you could get for this cold box instead? Because the milk arrives, the milk is cold, right? But for those of you who aren't aware, one of Gavin's long running wishes in life is to have a cold mailbox. Am yep. I saying that right? It's a really good idea. Don't. I don't know why because you're laughing at it. Because every day, apparently, Gavin gets milk, and he wants it to stay cold. I'm used to having a milk. Friend. I can't go down this rabbit hole with you. I can't go down this rabbit hole with you. It was cold out. It stayed cold outside. So just move somewhere cold. That's it. <laughs> you just live somewhere where that's not a possibility. Or like, don't order milk. Or only order it when you're going to be home. Or only order it when it's cold. Only have milk in the winter. Can you? You can freeze milk, right? It should arrive. I don't think you can. You can't? No, no, you can. It's like uh, it's like uh, crude oil. It's kind of thing. They do refinement on it, like crude oil. They like pasteurization. Skim, yeah, they skim off the layers. Milk is the same way. It's like milk comes out and then they get the cream out of it. Then they get half and half. I think I think that's a layer. <laughs> and then they get the whole milk and the two percent and everything. But what? What is the, the bottom layer is like water? What does that have to do with <laughs> not freezing it? Well, so I think if you if you freeze it, it's like it's, it's like it freezes in different layers. Yeah, right? it gets all. It's like different. Different things in there. Separates it, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Like the the fat and the water. I don't know. You try it. Freeze some milk and see what happens. Get ice cream. Someone's nah, it's gonna, not the same thing. Someone's going to buy a cold mailbox if I make one and sell one. 
Yeah, you. Kickstart it. Uh, yeah. probably, they already exist, probably. You we, do, a, you do a Kickstarter for a cold mailbox. Say, I have no fucking idea how to make this. <laughs> the whole purpose of this is to hire an engineer, and that person will figure it out. They'll figure out how to do it. Do we have the ability to do polls? Oh, yeah, we do. Don't we? No, they took it away. I'm not, no, not now. Okay. Well, right. next time. Show of hands. <laughs> how do they, hands. Why would they take it away? Here, why don't I make a tweet from the Rushi's account? That'll work. Also ask if people eat cat food. Do that one as well. I'll uh, not eat cat food. Have tried okay, cat yeah, food. Yeah. Have tried cat food. That's <laughs> not. There's no difference. Just eat it. You <laughs> ate cat food. No, but eat is like you could consuming it with your mouth. What? Well, te- yeah, but I think the the intent of or the you can interpret that as oh yes, I often eat cat food versus I have eaten cat food at some point in my life. I think it was. I th- you never ate cat. Food. What about fish food? Fish food? Yeah. Uh, I think I nibbled it. <laughs> fish food smells terrible to it's me. It's really bad. It smells like Yeah, cat food something. smells great though. The little flakes. Yeah, those seaweed treats that people eat? Nah. I just yeah. like, to me, they smell like fish food. Oh, like the, the thin strips of those like seaweed? No good. Yeah. You don't like them? No. Yeah, they're definitely, I think, an acquired taste. I'm sure there's lots of stuff that I eat that people would be like, ugh. What are you doing? Yeah. I feel you, like you eat peanut butter? Gross. That's gotta be gross. Some people like mashed up peanuts. Mmm. It's not just that though, is it? What's that? Yeah. How do you make peanut butter? You mash up peanuts. <laughs> I think you can make you can get like fresh the organic peanut butter at the grocery store where they just you can watch just literally just grind it up. But I think to make it onto the shelves, it's gotta have some kind of preservatives and then they usually just dump a bunch of sugar in it too. And mm-hmm. other other nuts make rank paste? Do the nuts no well it, like going back butter. to the layers thing as well. <clears throat> You can buy natural peanut butter in the store. You can see it on the shelf. It's like this fucking super dense layer of peanut butter and then this smaller but very clear level of just oil. And, like supposed, you and then you, you got to mix it. It goes like this. It goes. <laughs> and it's hard. It's like uh-huh. the, the that peanut butter just goes. You just in the bottom of that thing. It's separate. Like, no, I've so, had it before. Yeah. Good you stir it up, right? I yeah. feel like we should go get some. Is it like a. It's, well, what happens is. You do it, and then you end up spilling all the oil, and you just have really dense peanut Not everybody butter. does that, Chris. Some people, I'm sure, do that. Everybody does. Chris would just open it, drink the oil, and put, put the rest of it away. You could use that, oh. or just drink that oil. What? Drink it. Just like, it's gotta be, I don't know, it's probably some diet where you just drink peanut oil. And would that be the, the highest concentration? There you of- go. Let's see the, see the layer of uh, oh. oil on top. Yeah. There's, a, there's gotta be a lot of calories in that oil. Yeah. I would think so, you know, but I you, tell you that layer of peanut butter beneath that massive layer is fucking dense. I hear if you drink it, you become a peanut. <laughs> oh. Hey, are, it's a thing that people you had you, you had older brothers, right? I had so like, I have an older brother. Yeah, they they I had an older sister. I'm sure she got me to eat a bunch of stuff that I probably shouldn't have eaten. What kind of families did you guys see? This grow I said in? the same thing. Yeah, yeah my brother was like, constantly using me as an I, experiment. I did awful <laughs> things to my little brother. Did you? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. What did uh, you do? So. <laughs> Uh, one time, this, I think it was in sixth grade or something. Uh, my my mom was uh, working or something, so it was just me and him at home. And uh, this was around the time that like Scream had come out, and I had a Scream Halloween costume. So I like I put it on, and then uh, went outside, and we had two phone lines. So I called one of the phone lines and was like, "Hey, Brian, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah. what's your favorite scary movie? You know." And he he started freaking out, and then I like went around to where he was and like went to the to the window. Oh god. And then like napped like tapped on the window in the scream mask and he like freaked out cuz he was like you know a little kid and then uh then the cop showed up cuz he called <laughs> he called the police. <laughs> he called the police. <laughs> yeah. He called the cops and then and I was like still hiding out trying to scare him. <laughs> and yeah, and then the cop showed up and they but then he wouldn't let the cops leave until my mom got home cuz he was still convinced I was going to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> So how old were you when you did that? I was like, I was probably like 10. So it was actually like, so this is you weird. You were 10? Movie? 10 or 11, I think. That kind of freaks me out, because I guess I thought Scream came out way later. You were, yeah, you were like 94 10, or something? It might have been, or it could have been yeah. the second one. Or uh, you, no, you just seemed like you were, I mean. No, well, you were the, born in what, 86, 87? 87. 87. No, that makes yeah. sense, yeah. You'd have, been, you'd have been about 10 when yeah. Scream came out, when I had a costume. Yeah. Uh, when did Scream come out? What month? scary movies. That's what you would sound like. When did Scream come out? What was the uh ninety nine? That was a good uh that was a good marketing campaign because they had Drew Barrymore 
Oh yeah, all over the marketing. For Wasn't that movie. she like running with like a white top on or something? Yeah, but she was also if, spoiler for a twenty year old movie. Ye, twenty years old. <clears throat> uh, it was uh, she was in it for like two minutes, right? Oh, she just the beginning go. Yeah, just the beginning. Yeah, and yeah. she's like sets up the premise. She's talking on the phone, and the guy comes in and goes, "Yeah, Glad. The, and she was, but she was the biggest star of the movie, and she died in the first like ten minutes. I feel yeah. bad because I haven't seen Scream, but I've seen scary movie. Scary movie. Where you seen all the derivatives. That. Yeah, yeah. And it's weird. I think some things like get so popular that's what they become. I think it's a problem with classic movies too. Is I remember I saw Pulp Fiction. I was like, "Oh, it's fucking crazy!" And they told the story out of order, and it was fucking amazing. You know, because I was younger when I saw it. I've never seen a movie like that. Someone goes, "Well." You should go watch Citizen Kane. It's a nonlinear narrative as well. It's like set the standard for nonlinear narratives. And it's like the greatest movie of all time. I'm like, oh, go watch that. I watched it. I was like, oh, this is not good. You know, this isn't, this isn't as good as Pulp Fiction. Because the stuff that comes later is like has years of refinement and layers of inspiration sure. built onto it as well. And it's like you can't ever go back to when something was groundbreaking. Yeah. Well, and you go back and you're like, well, this just seems cliche. And then you're exactly. like. Exactly. And it's like, well, the reason it feels cliche is because everyone copied this. Right. Yeah. I, I also had a thing where I heard, you know, Weird Al, I heard most of his songs before I heard the original songs. Like I heard, uh -huh. I heard, uh, Eat It before I heard Beat It I did that by too. Michael Jackson. <laughs> you yeah. never heard Beat It growing up? I mean, I, no, I didn't. I, I, I heard Beat It before, or Eat It before Beat It. Because I bought, really? I got that album and I just listened to all the songs and I didn't know that they were being copied. <laughs> what happened there, Chris? Sorry. I saw Barb looked off screen and I looked off screen and. Yeah, you are turning into a cat. <laughs> you ever have that where your your pets just all of a sudden just look in a certain direction, <laughs> and they just stare. Have you ever done that thing outside where you you uh, are with a group of friends and you all make a pact to just look up? Mm -mm. Like, oh wow! Everyone who walks by is going to be like, they start looking up. Oh, that sounds like a lot of fun. It is. Have yeah. you? Uh, you have can you do it by yourself if you're talented enough. Mm. <laughs> have you seen the viral video trend that's begun? It's like the new whatever challenge. I, they can't keep it going for too long, though, because the more popular it gets, the harder it'll be to do. The it's, invisible thing? Yeah, where they, they convince someone that they're invisible. Oh, I saw that. It was a... It was a the, usually it's kids. Like, if it's me to you, I'm convincing you that I'm invisible? Well, you know, like the dog thing with the blanket where they throw the blanket and then they run? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's kind of like the new version of that where they take someone and they put them in a chair in the middle of the room. They put a blanket on them. It's usually a kid. Uh-huh. And then they say some spell, and then they take the sheet off. And everyone else in the room is in on it, and they, they're like, oh, he's gone. And then they can't hear him or see the person. And then the, there's the, one of the standards in it is, it, in it is uh, at like in the first like minute, you take a picture. You say, oh, I can feel him. He's touching me. I can feel him. I can feel him right now. And they say, come here, take a picture. And then you sit on the couch, take a picture, but you've already taken a picture. Yeah. And you show the picture. And then you, it, that's usually a great moment in these videos because then the turn and the kid sees the picture and he's not in it. They all fucking flip out. I mean, I'm sure there's kids who don't believe it, but the ones that make, you know, the postings, they are all losing their <laughs> Is it shit. Is called like Invisible Challenge? Or yeah, something? look, a kid thinks he's invisible. Yeah, they I never thought I'd laugh so much at, at 10 people like <laughs> emotionally torturing a child, but it's they, really funny. They did a, yeah, the kids are sometimes have breakdowns. Yeah. They did it with an adult. Like there's some Netflix magic show or something. That's where I first that, saw it. Yeah. It was like in Central Park or something like that. I assume that one spawned all the other ones. I think it was too. That's what I think too. I, th I think that video went viral after that show came out and then a bunch of people thought, oh, I can do this too. That's so sad. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty sad. See, my parents would just pretend that me and my older brother were funny and so they would just laugh at all of our stupid jokes. Um, but they never pretended we were invisible, thank God. So then when you went out into the real world and... Yeah, and we continued to think we were funny when... Oh, uh, I think you're funny. Thanks, Kevin. That's the nicest thing you've said to me Did in they like, 15 years. Like if you said a pun, they would all go, oh, that's a great <laughs> pun. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, those are your parents, man. <laughs> that's nice. Did yeah. you learn your puns from your parents? Learn. Uh, it's it's <laughs> more... There's like a catalog? <laughs> well, like g getting the sense of humor. Oh. My, uh, my mom's dad, so my grandfather, had a, a love of puns that me and my brothers would pick up on. But, yeah, my I mean, my dad does dad jokes, typical dad jokes. I think he was thrown on the spot. At RTX, and he just had a joke ready to go. Like someone was like, "Tell a joke," and he's like, "Here's one." Yep. Without even thinking, it's yep. impressive. It's it's that dad power. Yeah. I mean, you can't come up with one joke. Well, maybe? I feel like if if you're in a if you're just usually just a normal man, and then suddenly you're in front of a load of people, and then someone's like, "Here with a camera, tell a joke." You know, you gotta be you gotta be with it. What would be your? You mean it was, it was the fact that it was funny? The fact that he knew eight. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because but you have a you have. I a mean, joke. I'm, like, I'm impressed by your dad. <laughs> the app is amazing, and everything, but knowing a joke doesn't seem to be any kind of barometer for coolness. Okay, tell a joke. 
What's that? <laughs> Do you have a joke? Oh, yeah. There's three guys, and they each have a brick. <laughs> that's, my, that, that, that's my joke I always go to. Oh, every single time. Yeah. I, I, I heard a funny joke the other day, though, which is a guy uh, goes to an assassin because his wife is cheating on him. And uh, he heard about the assassin because he has a really specific marketing campaign, which is he, he basically charges $10,000 a bullet. And he asked the assassin, he goes, what happens if you miss? Do I have to pay for those? He goes, I don't miss. He says, okay. So they go and they camp out in the hills above their house and they're looking in the window. And the assassin's like, well, how do you want me to do this? He goes, well, I'm so fucking mad. I want you to shoot her in the head and I want you to shoot his dick off. And he's like, okay. And then they get in the bedroom and the assassin's looking through the scope. And the guy's like, are you going to shoot? And he goes, hold on a second. I think I can save you $10,000. <laughs> uh, <laughs> See? Yep. That's good. <laughs> There's another funny, uh, well, let's just tell jokes. <laughs> we can turn to a joke telling podcast. Yeah. So this one's in sign language. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody have a good weekend? Very yeah. good. Very good. Yeah? What day is it? You're Monday. looking perplexed. Hey, speaking of Dan being here, though, because Dan went back. That was part of your weekend. I had a weird experience with Dan being here where it was Sunday a couple of weeks ago. All of a sudden, Gav and Dan are in my house, but they're not there to hang out with me. They're hang out with Ashley. Yeah. And I already had plans that day. Well, invite us over once in a while. I invite you over all the time. What are you well, talking about? All the time. When was the last dog party I was invited? <laughs> <laughs> I doubt there's anyone. You make anyone a good point. Who invites <laughs> you over more than Bernie at this company? Does anyone invite you over more than that? I'm gonna have a dog party with no dog. Like I'm not even gonna say like an unsafe thing. Come to this dog party, but then people will bring their fucking dogs, right? Yeah, that would you backfire. You do an animal party for an animal that no one has. Ferret. Like a ferret, yeah, or a monkey party. Dude. And then hope someone brings a monkey, because then you get a monkey at a party. What are the cool <laughs> things about... <laughs> I'm going to hold the monkey party for Chris. Chris, forget the dog party idea for RTX Sydney. You and I are going to do a monkey party. C could what? our next prank be we convince Chris he's a cat by eating cat food? <laughs> no. Would you, you bring be, a monkey? A I don't, I'll do it. <laughs> would you be annoyed if I rode a horse into your house? Yeah, probably through the front door. That'd I don't know hard. which one that is. You don't know. Which, oh, you don't know which door is my front door. That's a good point. Yeah, but I, it'd be tough because doors are seven feet tall. Well, how tall is a horse? Probably taller than that. Yeah, but you sitting on a horse is definitely taller than that. Well, I would duck. Yeah. It's, yeah. Okay. Sure. No. No, I'd be annoyed. Don't do it either way. <laughs> don't. Don't come try to figure that out. Can you ride a horse? Uh, I rode a donkey once. I don't think it's the same thing. <laughs> like a full-on horse. Anybody, you ridden a horse, Barb? Mm hmm Chris? I've been on a horse. What, what does that, that mean? That's riding a that horse. Uh, Are you standing on it? I think it's more like you sit <laughs> on it, you take a I, picture, it was like, and then It was like go. one of those things when I was like a kid, and they were like, oh, come ride the horse at the ranch thing. And I was like, if someone was like, get on the horse, we got to get out of town, I would not. <laughs> <laughs> I would not go. I would be like, I'm just going to walk. <laughs> This is life. That's even an option. People are going to think because we record this in Texas, people are going to think that's what it's like here. Yeah. I thought that when I moved here that we'd ride horses to school and everything. I was really disappointed in the lack of horses. I was disappointed that there's hardly any tumbleweed. There yeah. is. Hardly. West Texas. You got to go west. Why would I go there? Yeah. Good point. Oh, to see for tumbleweed. the tumbleweed. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we have armadillos here. There was an armadillo in my front yard. They're noisy as fuck. Jack, Jack has skunks at the moment. They yeah. keep gassing his dogs. Are they? Who has to get rid of them? Because he's putting them on like Twitter with the, the security cam footage. How do you get rid of them? Uh, you could trap them. Or call pest control. Although if you trap the skunk in one of those wire cages, how would you pick up the cage? I mean, Johnny Knoxville did it. He got, he got got. Yeah. They only have to have so much of that like butt juice or whatever that is that they spray. Yeah, right? it's, like, it's like fermented ass. So if you can get them to like do a couple shots, then you're okay, right? Yeah. Well, it's still spraying out, right? Well, they might just dry fire, like, <laughs> like but there's nothing, no spray. I I had, uh, can you, could, it, could you extract the skunk spray? Is that yeah. a thing? Maybe you could. I'm not doing that. I'm busy eating cat food. I think I saw a video very briefly on Twitter this weekend where someone was using a skunk as like a therapy animal. Like a, oh, like, you know, know. I have like therapy dogs or like dogs that calm you down or whatever it was. Yeah. They were skunks. Well, they did, they, they That's disabled calming. the, the spray butt, right? You can, you disabled can, it? You could take it out. Like, I think you can. I think it's something you can. Or we'll put a cork in it. There's some sort of procedure. It's like getting a vasectomy or something. I don't know. <laughs> I mean. You just like remove their ass. Would you, for a million dollars, take a shot? Like a shot glass of skunk juice? A million dollars? Yeah. 
If it, if I, if it I didn't, didn't kill me. I don't think you could get that down, Chris. I, if it didn't kill, if it wasn't poisonous. Is it poisonous? Or even if it is a but little juice. bit poisonous. You might, if I got a really bad stomachache for a couple days. I think you get days. a bad stomachache from that. Yeah, yeah, but that's still worth a million dollars. For a million dollars, I would do Absolutely. You would have some bad thoughts. If I'd be a million dollars richer. <laughs> what if it like affected you permanently? Like every like time I you fart, smelled? it smelled like a skunk. They already smell bad, Barb. Like, <laughs> farts don't smell good. Yeah, but you don't smell your <laughs> fart like when you're driving through a countryside and you smell like, oh, Chris must have farted okay, 10 maybe, minutes ago. Maybe not do it for that. <laughs> okay. If you smell something bad in a car, no one in the car says, did we run over a fart? <laughs> no. <laughs> it, it's a very specific <laughs> smell and it's bad. Do you run over Chris? <laughs> the question. I saw one of the most frustrating videos I've ever seen before. I couldn't watch all of it. Uh, it was so frustrating. It's like a very modern look at American life and like a little snippet of it. And it was essentially a woman had a dog that she was trying to bring into a stadium, like into a like a baseball game. She's trying to bring this dog in with her. And service it, dog? She, yeah. So she's she, we pick up at the point where she starts recording because she's recording this now because she's being told she can't bring her dog in. So she's being wronged. And so she's going to tell this. And this guy is sitting there. He has like the book of procedures. And I think he even had like the clause from the American Disabilities Act. He had it right there. Right. And he explained to her, it's like, it's like a dog has, has specific trained abilities. She goes, this is a service dog. I have PTSD. This dog is a therapy dog. It, it should be allowed. This is discrimination. And the, 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 she was, you know, screaming and yelling, hooting and hollering. Yeah. And he's trying to stay. So it's like the whole thing of like, somebody's got the rules. Somebody thinks the rules don't apply to them kind of a thing, or that they're an exception, I should say, to the rules. And they're mad and they're, they, they're going to prove it and they're going to video everything. The frustrating thing about the video was the guy was saying, she's saying it's a service dog. He goes, he goes service dog, I, that doesn't mean anything to me for the American Disabilities Act. As long as the dog is trained to do something specifically to help you. As long as it's trained to do something specific to help you. Is the dog trained specifically to do anything to help you? And she's like, no, no, this is discrimination, whatever. It's like, for instance. Like, just give him a reason it, so yes, she could take it in. If it licks your cheek when you have an attack or when you have a seizure, that would be a thing. If the dog is trained, for instance, to lick your cheek, that would be that. Then you could bring the dog in if it's trained to do something like that. And she's like, this is, you know, I have BTSC and you guys are discriminating. And she's like, everybody in the comments is like, lady, he's giving you, like, he did it over and over again. It's like, he's giving you the thing to say, yeah. just fucking say it to him. Because he's got a job to do and he's telling you exactly what you need to say in order to bring your fucking dog yeah. in. She wasn't having it. She'd rather it's have like the someone at a video. bank being like, oh, it's really weird that no one's going to be here at five o'clock today. Yeah. And the cameras will be off at five o'clock today. <laughs> right. Like, get the message. And we we go the vault with the date. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was just so frustrating to watch, man. So and you couldn't get through it. No, I couldn't. I had to go to just read comments about it after like the what, second or third time. Of the what guy. was the outcome? Uh, she didn't get in. She yeah. did, like the whole thing. She never she never clued into the fact she was so just offended and outraged that she couldn't get past what he was clearly trying to tell her. Some people love being offended. It's more exciting than a baseball game. You know what? I was thinking about that on Twitter. Like, people, the recent trend on Twitter is Jeez. they want a bunch of these accounts to be removed, all these offensive accounts. Like Alex Jones? And then, yeah, they don't understand why people are, like, even some people are saying, like, Trump's account should be banned, right? Because it violates this policy and this and that and the other thing. And they're like, they don't understand. Like, they're pointing to all these other social platforms where people are doing that. And taking these accounts away when they did, they did just take away uh, Alex Jones' account. But uh, and was that from lying? Because it's false information. I don't know That's what not it was. because just, of anything I think else. It's like it's... offensive, crude. Uh, but you can be offensive. He did something specific on... that he did something specific that got his Twitter account removed. I just thought it was the whole and info misinformation too. thing that they're trying to crack down on. Yeah, yeah. I know Facebook is trying to crack down on that because you know I mean it's they they're going to have a huge problem with the government if they don't crack down on that. But uh, all I could think too was about the Twitter. People couldn't believe that Twitter wouldn't disable his accounts. Like that's why people show up on Twitter. I feel like is to get mad. That's like it's like if you took away those accounts, feel like Twitter's boring and they wouldn't go back again. <laughs> why? Yeah. Why does the government get involved in Facebook and Twitter? Is it because they're public? Yeah. Well, because they're publicly held companies. You mean? Yeah. Um, like if I wanted to start a social media where it was just lies, would the government shut me down if it got big enough? I would think that the the vector by which the government 
would regulate social media would be via the FCC, like the same people that go after Howard Stern, essentially, is because it's, and I, and I should know this, but I don't, uh, the FCC's jurisdiction over the internet, but that's where, that's where it would fall. And so it would make sense because it's essentially, while it's not a public utility, there's a lot of other private carriers that handle it. It's essentially like a public service. When did they start governing the internet? When? <clears throat> I mean, I don't know what you mean. When, who governs the internet? Well, like, FTC. When did they start saying what was right and wrong on the internet? I don't think, I don't know. I mean, they brought in uh, Mark Zuckerberg. I don't know, he might have been in like a special committee because specifically because of the election. Hullabaloo. Anybody know Mark Zuckerberg, what he was uh, testifying in front of Congress for? Uh, but like, what, if you're doing an ad, you have to say that it was an ad. Yes. Like, that's FCC. That's, right? yeah. What did I say? FTC, it. Federal <laughs> Trade Commission. <laughs> FTC might well, be I mean FTC. FTC, but yeah. what was that always a thing? Well, it is a disclaimer that you have to say when you're advertising a product. I do think in the but web like, world. I don't know when that first came into place, though. I remember when it, it was like probably like three or four years ago. It was hashtag ad. Yeah, we didn't used to have to do that yeah. for any sponsored stuff. It's more than that, though. It's you can't put uh, the disclaimer or the the. Um, uh, information that the video is sponsored, like below the fold. It even talks about like comments. If there's if there's comments where you have to hit more to see it, you ha it has to be above that. Mm. And in fact, we just caught a little bit of grief uh, from one of our videos we put out because it was like the description of the video. It just read like an ad because it, that's where it has to be. I honestly believe that it's a little bit too far to one side for the internet in particular. Like <laughs> if they had to stop a TV show in the middle of the TV show to say, oh, this TiVo that's here on Friends, this was, the TiVo gave us this. Yeah. For product placement. We had to do that. No, they just put a little slate at the end saying, uh, you know, additional consideration by TiVo. Or something I feel like, like Friends had a whole episode that was about Pottery Barn. And at no point they were did. they like... I just watched that one yesterday. Yeah, at no point were they like, oh, sponsored by Pottery Barn. Right. Although they're kind, they're, has brands all over it. They're kind of shitting on Pottery Barn, though, a lot. On that. Well, yeah, I guess so. Well, the, I mean, I remember, I think it was Heroes or something. That Remember that show, Heroes? Yeah. Nissan there was Versa. a plot point <laughs> where the, the one uh, guy gave his daughter, like, oh, I got you a new car. And it was like, oh, this is this is this, this whatever the blah, so -and -so blah, blah. car. And it has she's really like, cool. Oh, my God. And, and it was like, why is this part? And I was like, oh, yeah, it's sponsored. Yeah. yeah. But it was what, like, oh, like that bit in Transformers 3 where they have a Mercedes commercial just in the middle of the movie. They like stop the movie to show off the car on the website and stuff. Oh, that's so weird. <laughs> it's bad. Yeah. I feel like it affects actual celebrities less. Like Kim Kardashian could just be like, look nah. at this thing. Oh, yeah. And doesn't hashtag yeah. ad and, and we get a lot of stick if we don't do that. Right. You know, it's not enough to say this is sponsored by so-and-so. You have to just disclose everything. In fact, a lot of times um, when I have my laptop, it's Microsoft gave that to me years ago. And it's like every time it comes, comes up in conversation, I feel like I have to say every single time this laptop was given me to my Microsoft. And after a while, it just sounds like I'm fucking bragging about getting a free laptop. You know? <laughs> so, but it's like I have to do that because it's the rules and that's the rules that we have to follow. If I hashtag add every one of my tweets from now on, would they come that's after me because I'm not doing it extra on the ones that are a sponsored? Ooh, that's interesting. Do you, uh, I don't, I don't know about that, but they might say it was misleading to say it was sponsored. I don't know what that. There's any regulation against that. We actually put up uh, in the early days on it wasn't a drinking, but some other site that I was running. Um, I put up fake banner ads uh. because, like, <laughs> I just, I just literally went to another website grab their script for serving their ads and put it on my website. And it was like literally serving their ads. So they were making money from all the impressions, <laughs> but I was using it as a way to show, Hey, we have ads so that we can get ads and we can, you know, make, a, you know, something That's to support the site. So you, you were, you, people were earning money off of your banner ads. Yeah, I, I would literally yeah. put like somebody like I don't know if it was like let's say Amazon. I took their banner. I don't know if Amazon had banner ads back then, but uh, and I put it on the site just so I could like go to other people and say, hey, we've got these banner ads on our site to look Can more you? impressive. Yeah, yeah. yeah because That's, it was all ad networks back then. I feel like it'd be interesting it. to take out TV ad space and not advertise anything. Like imagine if an episode of Friends just shot like three extra minutes of content and ran it as an ad between the ad break. Has anyone oh, ever done that? That's interesting. Yeah, but there's so much though. You have I mean, to buy work. all the local affiliates too. Oh yeah, it's a bit weird here, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. especially when you're in the like morning. 
uh, talk show stuff. It, it, like with the gym, they always have these uh, TVs up. And uh, the local commercials for local news are always just like, oh, my God. There's one dude in Austin. I can tell you the name of the company. It's, it's, a, it's a lawn company. They do the – where they fertilize your lawn to get green grass. And uh, he does the commercial every day. He's in a full suit. And then he has a fucking tarantula. He's bald. He shaves his head. He's got a tarantula on his head. A, the whole a time. real one? Yeah. It's just a fucking tarantula. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm telling you, it's a what? thing. And he doesn't acknowledge it. Uh, uh, there's there's one I've seen this so many times. There's one commercial where like he like moves the leg because the leg is like <laughs> thing. But it's obviously it works because this guy's a fucking tarantula on his head. I'm sure you guys can find this. I want to see this so it, badly. He it, said it's a car dealership? What is it? No, it's, uh, it's a lawn, uh, like a lawn fertilizing place. Wow. Um, and he never says anything about the spider. No. He's never like, this is my friend Billy. You know, I don't think so. But then again, on the gym, I might miss that if he's done it. But I don't think so. I think he just goes and talks about <laughs> how you green, how great their service is. That's, That's great so for clever. the environment. I love that. Well, if you're talking about the environment, that makes sense. Got a little spider buddy. It's a fucking monster spider. It's like half. It's like this. Or maybe he's got a weird Wait, toupee. You said he's bald? <laughs> yeah. What is he? Is he bald or? Uh, yeah. Well, I don't know if he's bald or shaves his head. Whatever. He doesn't have any hair. Uh, yeah, yeah. So. It's like it's like a weird toupee that moves around. So if you sh if you shave your head, you're not bald. Yeah. Aren't you still called bald? Yeah. I don't know. I, I listen. I don't want to. I don't want to. We were in the queue there for a second. Oh, you I see just that? looked up a whole yeah. page of spiders. We were, we were briefly in the queue. We were in the queue for doing that. Yeah. Like if I shave my head, he'll, you'll be like, "Hey, you're bald now." How much fees to do it? Five million dollars. <clears throat> you wouldn't need five million dollars. You'd only need one dollar with one dollar shave club. <laughs> this episode of the Rooster Podcast is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. No matter what you do in the bathroom to get ready, Dollar Shave Club has everything you need to look, feel, and smell your best. They have amazing shower stuff, hair styling products, toothbrushes, toothpaste, and of course, razors and shave supplies. Their products are amazing. Uh, I know Gus uses them. He never shares them with me, so that must mean good things. Everyone has their own one, excuse me, everyone has their own way to get ready. You might shave your whole body to get ready for a bike race, Barb. Dollar Shave Club's executive razor and shave butter can help. The thing is, no matter what you do to get ready, Dollar Shave Club has everything that you need. And right now, you can get ready with an amazing deal on any one of their starter sets. Uh, we recommend the Daily Essential Starter Set. Because Gus says he loves the Amber Lavender Body Cleanser. Would anyone think that Gus loves an Amber Lavender Body yeah, Cleanser? Yeah, takes care of himself. All right, but you can't go wrong with any of them. Head on over to dollarshaveclub.com slash roosterteeth to, to pick your own DSC starter kit for just $5. After your starter set, products ship at a regular price. Make sure you check out their new video, too. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash roosterteeth, dollarshaveclub.com slash roosterteeth. Dollar Shave Club, they had those crazy viral ads. Like, they leaned into viral video marketing years and years ago. Yeah. yeah. Did they throw a towel on a, sh on a razor and it disappeared? <gasps> that That's is... actually not the guy. That, you what? mean this, a this different is a different guy? guy? That's actually not the guy. What are you talking this about? This is a different lawn guy with a different spider on his Is head. this a thing? <laughs> it's a different lawn company. How could no, it? It's, no, that's the logo. That's the logo. So oh, that so must be the same guy. No, maybe it's not the same maybe guy. He maybe lost he his son and he yeah. passed on the tradition. Do you think that the spider outlived the father? <laughs> oh, maybe. Was the guy this older? This is it, though. This is it. This is. Oh, so like, he passed the spider down. Like it's just a little mush. He goes like, "Get out of the way. Get, you're getting my eye." Kind of a thing. Damn. Yeah, it's fucked up. Yeah, but the, I tell, I'm telling you, it's not. That's not the guy. <laughs> there's Maybe there's guys. multiple employees there who do the commercials with the spider. Yep. Thank Dude. you for finding that. That, yeah. makes, that made that made my day. I Even also, though I see it every fucking day. Did you hire that guy for your law? No, but I remember the name of that company. I didn't say it for some reason because I thought anyone would cause problems for them. But so I assume you have your lawn done by someone. I don't have a lawn. Oh, that's true. What do you got then? Rocks? Yeah, I got rocks. Got a bunch of rocks. Rocks and fish. That's right. I got uh, I got just bushes and trees. That's smart. It's in my house to put it. Yeah. Snow. I got ground covering, Chris. Got stuff that covers the ground. It's called yeah. uh, no scape. Or what's it called? Zero scape. Zero scape. <laughs> no scape. No scape. No smart. escape. Smart. <laughs> I also want to point out that the poll we put up about cold mailboxes, if you would buy one, it's at uh, even 50-50 right now. With uh, almost 2,500 votes. 20, dude, that's 1,200 backers on your thing, dude. That'd be amazing. That'd be enough to get it off the well, ground. Well, they, they say they're going to buy it, but... Now that we've talked what about is, it... What's the price? How much would someone pay for that? 100? That's you not that get, much. Can you, yeah, but can you get an outdoor 
insulated refrigerated box for a hundred well, bucks. Company connected, would figure it, it out. It could be connected from the house. Like you could just take a line from your AC or something. Get one of those fucking Yeti coolers. Those things are expensive, dude. It's like that's like two hundred fifty bucks for a cooler. Yeah, but apparently they'll hold ice for. Like seven days. That's a total lie, by the way. I don't know how long it is, but it's a long time. What metal holds cold long enough? What is the vibranium, ho- adamantium? What's the DC metal? Is there a DC metal? I thought. It- oh, hmm. supermanium. Hey, comic nerds, what's a DC metal? Supermanium. Supermanium. Kryptonium. Anybody? Wow. Batmanium. Somehow you're bigger dorks for not being dorks. I don't well, know why like, you don't know that. Kryptonite isn't metal, though. No, that's. No, I'm just trying to think. What would it be? I know I can't think of what the DC metal is because there's a shitload of them in Marvel. Yeah. There's two. <laughs> vibranium well, and adamantium. But they switched over to vibranium for the Avengers. I realize we're really far away from your point, but I'm coming back to it, Gavin. They switched over right. to vibranium for the Avengers movies because <clears throat> adamantium was already associated with the, the mutant part of the universe, which is the X-Men. Do you think their X-Men. sex Go toys on. are also made out of vibranium? <laughs> <laughs> they always need a special I think they metal. absorb vibration, so you wouldn't want that. You'd put it <laughs> in your vag and go perfectly <laughs> still. <laughs> like, absorb everything. Or just your body would vibrate, but that would stay perfectly still. Which, what, what is Captain America's uh, shield made out of? Vibranium. 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 Okay. Yeah. Uh, now, in the comics, it's made out of uh, vibranium adamantium, and I believe another Mithril. alloy called Alloy X or something like that. Which is Gallium. They, they can't ever his shield can never be recreated. What? Why? In in, in the comic, Captain American shield oh. cannot. I be I feel like in the in the re- film replicated. they made it in in like five minutes. I think Stark just like had it in his like, like in oh, his glove this? compartment. <laughs> like, oh, I got one of these. Yeah. Why, why can't it be recreated? In the comic, it can't because whatever the alloy X is or the process by which they combined uh, vibranium and adamantium, uh, it can't be replicated. So what was? Mjolnir made out of the heart of a star, right? But like, was that metal? Like, what you know what that metal? metal is? Mithril. Why not? And then his hammer was well, not the hammer. The, what was the, the axe? Was the same star? Yeah. Forged in the heart of a dying star. I mean, how long has this star been dying? If he, I know, if right? Making all these weapons from it. Because they built those rings around it. Is it a star? It seems kind of small for a star. I mean, a star. It's a dying small. star, so it's like shrunk down like a raisin. How big was the star of David? <laughs> Two of the what, what, the, ever. what do you think is the most Jewish weapon, Barbara? Mm, our Woody wits. Allen. <laughs> <laughs> Woody Allen forged with a in, gun. The, in the heart of the Star of David. <laughs> uh, the most Jewish weapon. I don't know what that means. Krav Maga. Our frugality. Frugality. <laughs> <laughs> applause. Barbara just, applause. Made, <laughs> Barbara just did the American Sign yeah. Language our version. Our savings of account. Frugality. The, I, I think the. I could be so Krav-a-ga. wrong. I could be so wrong in this. I think the sign language for Jewish person is this. What's this? this Some, is something like, like beard, but or maybe it's like something with money. Is it really? They probably changed that. It's, it's something with hair or money. Oh, hair? Like for Hasidic? The curls? Maybe. I don't know. I gotta look. I gotta look up. Anyways, continue. The uh, Krav Maga is fucking dangerous. Yeah, Krav Maga. That's the uh, IDF uses that. Or no, is it really special forces, not IDF? And and that's Jewish. Yay. Israeli? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Israeli defense. I mean, I got Israeli. that part. I just didn't know that that's where that was from. I'm pretty sure, right? Anybody? Krav Maga? You guys aren't reading comics. You're busy doing Krav Maga and MMA shit? <laughs> the fuck do y'all do on the weekend? Thanks, Pertle. Damn it, they missed a great name for it. What? Come, Ju- come Jewish Jew. Kung Fu. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to put my money on Jewish Kung Fu. <laughs> <laughs> Nith Metal. What is- oh, Nith Metal's the DC. Becca just wrote me. The 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 chat's going crazy. Sorry, we should be somebody should be on chat. I'm not on chat right now. Nith metal? Apparently, I, that's either. Wait, that's the name they came up with? Nith with a Y, N Y T H. Nith metal. Huh. What would you have named it, Chris? Hammer of Thor. What was that Hammer metal? Th- I would have named it Super Metal. <laughs> that's just why not. Cranium. No. Bad ma- bad manium. <laughs> Did you say cranium? <laughs> cranium. 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 Some Nith dude's metal, head on a stick. Or nth metal. Sorry. Beck is passing it wrong. Nth metal, also called ninth metal, is a special metal with gravity negating effects. The fuck does that mean? What about it heavy metal? It is native metal? to Thangar, the home planet of Qatar Hall, and Shiera Thal. Anybody? Who, mm. who the fuck are those people? Among the unusual properties of nth metal, or also <laughs> called ninth metal, is the ability to negate gr- gravity, allowing a person wearing an object such as a belt, 
made of nth metal to fly. In addition, oh, that's cool. In addition, <laughs> nth metal also protects the wearer from the elements and speeds the healings of wo- the healing of wounds, increases their strength, and protects them from extremes in temperature. What, that's a so pretty where's, fucking good metal to have. Where's that on the periodic table? <laughs> it's all it's like the way, way the off on the side. It's a bunch, bunch. It's like past like a bunch of stuff. Why like. has there not been anything added to the periodic table in a while? Because it's, it's all just made up stuff at this point, isn't it? It's like theoretical. No, elements. no, no. They they like force create elements. They're like, but elements they don't even that don't exist naturally. They put forces on them to like, oh, this this is technically a new element, but only yeah. because we like. But some of them are like have only existed for a fraction of a second, and it's yeah. like, all right, it's on there now. Yeah. But how have they not done that more? Because what does it take to make a new element? Like how do you, what, what differentiates one element from another? The amount of the, the arrangement of electrons atoms, and, and protons. Yeah, and it, what is it? The, the arrangement of electrons and protons. Close, right? Close. It's and, it can, but you can lose an electron on an atom. Yeah, but like you have to make a new arrangement of of like the 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 the, the circles of go ahead. electrons yeah, go ahead. that like the Olympics. No, no, no. It, 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 it's the number of protons in the nucleus. The number of pro- basically the atomic weight. That's why the chart for the periodic table of elements is numbered. So it's essentially the number of protons in the nucleus. So they got to mush another proton in. Not an easy process to so make another element. The top element is really crammed right now, and, and it, really they're sh- uh, they're. I don't, I don't really know much about that that deep into the periodic table of elements, but they're very volatile. They only last, like you said, for millions of a second. Fractions of a second. Mm. So there's some that are there. I mean, there's one in there, Einsteinium. So that had to be discovered or named after Einstein was around. What do you think? Because that would be an amazing coincidence if Einsteinium <laughs> is na- not named after well, Albert what's, what's, Einstein. I mean, what if it was just like one mug? Oh, well, they wait, made four new elements last year. Oh, dude. Well done. What, what happened to 114? They're on un- Nuntrium. Un, un, non, penti- un, 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 pentium. You fuckers need to take an English. So they're just saying un, un and then putting the next number up, like pent. Un, un, they skipped un, one. Un, Where's un, un, quatrium? Or the six. Or hex. Un, un, hex. Those are the unofficial names. Those are temporary names based upon numbers. Probably. It goes from un, un, trium to un, un, pentium to well, un, un, septium. Well, because trium is threeum and pentium is oh, fiveium. That's why yeah. it skipped. The atomic numbers are 113. 115, 117, and 118. Yeah, well, that's so what you're you missing said. 14 and 16. They can't get the 14 and 16 to go. I'm looking at the names. You were looking at the numbers. Oh, okay. Yeah. A uh, none, none, none. Uh, they need better names. Do you think? Would you, yeah. be, you Would you be satisfied with your life if you create if you discovered or created a new element and be like, well, I did this. That's pretty fucking big, dude. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It's a big thing. Yeah. And but what if like, that element leads to a lot of death in the world? Like vibranium. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, I'm just saying it's like a momentous discovery. But we sure. can also make a lot of life. You don't know what ununum pentantium might have. That's true. <laughs> That's true. It could split fetuses into 12. Yeah. I feel like the... Let's have an element party. Me and you. Yeah. When they're in RTX City. We're going to do that, Chris. We're going to have an yeah. element party. I feel like the, the, money, the money to be made... Ununum <laughs> I feel like the money to be made is at the beginning. Like before hydrogen. Oh, you take like, out protons? Like half. Just like what's an electron? What element is that? Just like one electron? Yeah, or like half a proton. Well, that create, that's like atomic bombs. That's a quark. You're actually right. You're actually right. So if you want to go smaller than hydrogen, you're getting into like particle physics and quarks and things like that. So quark? that's where the money yes. is. Get work on that. All right, forget the mailbox. Bombs. <laughs> Don't, isn't bomb, isn't, aren't bombs just like splitting electrons and then they blow well, up? Well, hydrogen bomb. There's, yeah, that's just like splitting. I think quantum... Physics. What does that mean to anybody here? Anything quantum? R- real small, like. There you go. Yeah, smaller than atoms. They oh, get the little small stuff. There's some really fun videos. If you want to watch some, some crazy stuff about quantum physics online, there's one. <laughs> I think I'm absolutely sure I've talked about this like a billion years ago on the podcast, but it's a video. It's one of my favorite videos on the internet. I should go back and watch it again. It is quantum physics explained by a cartoon duck. <laughs> but it's like, it's really well done. Is it the Affleck duck? No, no, it's literally just like a... Like quantum a, physics! <laughs> quantum. <laughs> but uh, there's a really weird thing where um, they were testing particle physics. They were, they were firing uh, essentially like one particle through a slit and they predicted how it hit the wall behind it oh, and it I would think... hit it. Yeah, it would hit it in a pattern. Uh, but if you observed it, it right, it would affect the results. Yes. If you observed the experiment, it would have a different result than if you didn't observe it. Well, how- like you take the end result, the sheet that the particle hits, 
if you take that sheet and look at it, it's one way. Well, that's not the result we expected. Why are we getting this weird result? So then they monitored the electron or the particle going through the slit, and when they monitored it, it acted as it should. But then they take away the monitor, the ability to look at it, and it goes back to the other pattern. I feel like, like it's that, like faking it when no one's looking. At that point, the universe is just trying to yeah, get away with something. It's it like, is. They're onto us. It is. Hmm. We need Elon Musk to come and smoke his blood. <laughs> what, 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 tell us all explain about this it. to us. Tell what, us all what about do it. What quantum computers mean to you? Like, why is that significant? Uh, I don't actually know. Uh, I guess it's just like may, maybe it's just like can process a lot faster. Like a like a room temperature superconductor would be fucking amazing for uh, semiconductors, but. Um, yeah, I guess it's just I don't know if I don't know if it's like it's uh the ability to perform the the registers like you get all the way down to basically what a computer is. If you get all the way down to the CPU and you get down to the binary level, it's really just a bunch of switches is what it is, but it's just really fucking small. And there's little digital switches between 1 and 0 and that's it. So, I guess that's that. I don't actually know. I don't actually know. Do we have quantum computers now? Well, I think Dan was explaining to me that the where they're at with quantum computers is that they now can have a quantum computer that can tell you that two plus two is probably four or something. He was explaining it in a way where it was like, that's all right. What? So Wait, like what? what a regular computer? Yeah. Yeah. This Wikipedia entry. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, I don't I'm, I'm like, misquoting it. I don't know what he's talking about or what I'm talking about. So a computer that can, can tell, tell you that... with a 99.999% <laughs> probability that two plus two is in fact All right. four. You guys are ready for this? I'm reading you some basics. So this is like, there's times when Wikipedia... We've gone from eating cat food to this, by the way. Actually, so yeah. dog parties <laughs> to eating cat food to this. <laughs> it's a long, we're a long way from the dog party, Gavin. <laughs> the, um, but... There's sometimes where Wikipedia feels like an encyclopedia, and I know that's what it is and what it's based on, but when you got Encyclopedia Britannica, you know, you couldn't look up <clears throat> movies by Quentin Tarantino in it, you know, and stuff like that, which is, I think, how most of, or I couldn't look up, like, Marvel superheroes in the yeah. enc in, uh, Encyclopedia Britannica. Have multiple things in them. No, you could look up, like, <clears throat> real actual facts and everything. And so this quantum computing article on Wikipedia region, but I'm going to skip and I'm going to the basics part here. Uh, a classical computer has a memory made up of bits where each bit is represented by either a one or a zero. So far, I'm on the mark about that part. Quantum computer, on the other hand, maintains a sequence of qubits, which can represent a one, zero, or any quantum superposition of those two qubit <laughs> states. A pair of qubits. That, what does that mean? It's like you can have one, you can have zero, or anything else. Yeah, other stuff as well. <laughs> like there's that fuzzy logic stuff in there. Barb, do you want to uh, sign this as I read it so that people get everyone get it? <laughs> a pair of qubits can be in any quantum superposition of four states. <laughs> it's the new dab right there. And then. three qubits in any superposition of eight states. In general, a quantum computer with n qubits can be in an arbitrary superposition <laughs> of up to two to the nth power different states simultaneously. Oh, so they can be in multiple states at the same time. Yeah. I guess you just like explain, compute in other dimensions. Explain Schrodinger's cat. Schrodinger's cat yeah. is, there's a box, yeah, right? And mm -hmm. then someone says there's a cat in the box, or there's some knowledge in the world that there's a cat in the box. Well, I think there is a cat in the box. But does the cat exist if you don't look in the box? My argument would be, yeah, because the cat's the box. Well, I thought it wasn't to so do the with... The cat, I said that wrong. The I, cat, thought it wasn't the cat whether the, the box. I thought it wasn't whether the cat would exist in the box, it was whether well, it, it was alive like or dead. a very good dead. cat party, I'll say that. Is that, what it is? is that what it is? It's like the cat is both dead and alive. Until you... Uh, like until you observe it, until you know. observe it, until you open it and see it, you just kick the shit out of the box, and it's a cat meow. <laughs> so you're, you're good. The experiment's over. Don't kick a cat in a box, by the way. Don't put cats. Don't in kick box. anybody in a box. Speaking from experience, you got uh, kicked in the box. Do you remember as the old office, I was in a box full of packing peanuts, and Ray came in and oh, like, you were that. physically and in a box. Like, he drop, drop kicked you. He didn't yeah. just drop kick it. it. He like running dive kicked it. Yeah, and then was very unapologetic about it. I did not hear one single sorry. Well, he didn't say sorry. He just said, "Don't be in a box." <laughs> what? Don't be in a box. <laughs> What's a drop kick? It's where he like you went off fly. the ground. It's two feet kicking. It's a two feet jumping kick, yeah. right? But a drop kick is also when you drop something and then kick it. Like a like a, well, like, that's like that's a punt. punt. That's a punt. And when you punt, you punt by drop kicking. Mm. It's yeah. In sport, you don't do a two foot kick. But I think no, if you, you don't do the big <laughs> wrestling you, move. If you no. kick someone, unless you physically dropped them first, you have to use two. I feet. think is it you are the one dropping and kicking? I, f I think it's because you drop on the floor after you've kicked them. 
That do, hey Eric, yeah, you're a wrestling nerd. What is what's that drop kick move actually called? Drop kick. That's it. Just drop the, kick. The two feet jumping in the air. Jump in the air and then two feet. Drop kick. Thanks for the information, yeah. Eric. Yep. That's what we're here for. It's good to know. Always good to have a wrestling professional. Probably my favorite all time jackass clip, and that changes. My actual favorite of all time is when he boxed Butterbean. That's my favorite jackass <laughs> clip. And he's just snoring on the floor in the department store. Dude, Johnny Knoxville is <sighs> such just a genuine genetic performer. Like, he just comes up with this ridiculous shit, and he subjects himself <laughs> to it. But to me, it's like, you can tell the guy is genuinely a, a performer and entertainer. But he gets in a fight with Butterbean in, like, a retail shop? Yeah. I guess we're, like, in a flea market or something, like, next to the jewelry counter. <clears throat> and this Butterbean's, like, 400 pounds? Who the fuck knows? Huge dude. And he just, de yeah, drop kick and a drop kick. They're the same thing. Start a poll. Uh, drop kick or drop kick? <laughs> yeah, which one? But uh, Butterbean just fucking clocks Johnny Knoxville, knocks him out. He's like laying in like a twisted fashion that no one would ever lay in because it would be like p horribly painful, but he's knocked down. And like Gav said, he's snoring. Just yeah. like, just like. And, and I think he hit his head either on the floor or the counter on the way down. Cracked his head open, he's bleeding. They're like, they get paramedics, they're trying to revive him. They're trying to revive him. And uh, they, revive, <laughs> they revive him. And he's like, uh, and they go, Johnny, Johnny, uh, you were knocked out. You were knocked out. You're back. Are you feeling okay? And he goes, yeah. How's Butterbean? <laughs> <laughs> He's unconscious. And he comes back and he fucking has to show how's Butterbean. <laughs> but like, one so of my favorite, uh, the dr best dropkick thing I've ever seen in my life is Bam Margera bet everyone else that he would just stand there. And they could come and try to kit. They had to hit both feet <laughs> into his head. And nobody could do it. Nobody could like get high get enough. High. High enough. And they're all like, most of them are former skaters or current skaters at the time they filmed it. And uh, no one get high enough to get both feet. Like, like I think like Ryan Dunn like clipped him in the jaw oh, and everything. God. But he still gets back up there. He's like, nah, nobody can do it. Nobody can do it. Fucking Dave Englund comes in like, it's <laughs> amazing the air he gets and just fucking <laughs> lays out Bam Margera. What was that in? I don't remember that. I don't even remember what that was in. I think that was like in a cut scene from like Jackass. 2.5. Oh, I've never seen the point fives. So yeah. I have to get those now. Oh my god. I'm sure that clip's online. Does that it's, series hold up? I think so. Yeah. It's like the Three Stooges, right? I the mean, original, it's like... The original MTV show holds up. There he up. is. Oh, so oh, is this, this the Dave England one? So did they get a running start or anything? I don't think this is... Oh, that's... Oh! oh. <laughs> that's when Dave England came in. How did he not and got him. fucking die Wait, no, there's a slow, there should be a slow motion here of it. Oh my god. Dave England, by the way, a, a totally un underrated <laughs> member <laughs> of Jack. Look at that height. Look at that. He just <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh my god. That must have been Jackass. <laughs> that must have been Jackass 3 if they had the Phantom. See, yeah, and see, you wonder if it holds up. It's like, I've never shown a clip from Jackass and people just in the room just don't start laughing. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's like, just really it's good. Just I'm funny. so sad that they didn't make more. Yeah. They were, they were they on there. They just got old. <laughs> well, no, Johnny, not, not, he, did, he did a movie recently where yeah, he, like, he, just he, did, he like broke his yeah. eye. It was yeah. eye popped out. It's eye popped out, yeah. It's based on that that horrible amusement park called Action Park. I grew up in the Northeast, so I knew about Action Park growing up. But what's it called? It's called something Action else. Action Point. Action Point is what it's called? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You should go watch the Action Park documentary. <laughs> There's a documentary? Park. About the actual place. Oh, yeah. I'll watch that. But uh, I think it's a great idea for a series of movies. Like, you know, as long as he stays alive and healthy, you know, I would watch those jackass guys, like, be in movies where they actually do all the stunts. Like, there's something in the trailer for that where they throw him through the side of a bar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> there's always, too, that moment, the jackass, where, like, something goes wrong and, like, somebody face plants in the dirt and skids for, like, four feet, and everyone else just goes like this. And then there's no, no one, the cameras don't stop rolling, and they just leave it on the person, just, like, struggling for their life, <laughs> you know, essentially. <laughs> it's like, it's like that's really specific to the Jackass series. Johnny Knoxville was great too, because even if he wasn't doing the stunt, he would just make looks to the camera and say like one or two it's words and it'd be amazing. gold. He also has the best laugh. Yeah. Yep. So contagious. Although it's annoying too. Like, my, no offense to Michael, Michael's got a fucking annoying laugh, but it's a great laugh. Michael's laugh is like, ha 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 ha. <laughs> no, Michael's <laughs> laugh, Michael's laugh feels like it's at you. Like, it's specifically, <laughs> it's like on the level of like Nelson like on The sharp, Simpsons. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> my, my <laughs> is just like directed at I you. I just like all the, the breaks of air he takes between the ha ha's. 
It's such a cartoon laugh. It's so great. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, anything else to talk about or should we wrap this one up for the day, guys? Uh, did you do all your ad reads? I did all my ad reads. Well so done. Gus doesn't have to catch up next week because I yeah. look at me. Arizona really Circle next week. Oh, Arizona yeah. Circle is next week. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, on uh, It's coming out on the 19th, mm -hmm. which is uh, the Wednesday. And what is that for people who oh, don't it, know what it is? It's the sketch comedy show with Funhouse. And Rooster Teeth. And Rooster Teeth that we did together. And uh, it's going to be on first next week, Wednesday. It's you, the Funhouse you... crew and then Chris and Josh. Josh and Blaine, uh, and, Blaine, Blaine and, Jessica. and Jessica. Did and you Jessica. write some? Right, right, right. Yeah, right. yeah. it was a big collaboration. And then uh, it's a lot of fun. And uh, and I think we're also going to do like a live stream out in L.A. And then uh, on Wednesday. How long is each episode? How many episodes? Oh, it's just the pilot. Just pilot? Okay. So if people watch it, then we'll make more. Support oh, it. Right. We showed a clip. <laughs> Back from, it on Kickstarter right for Gavin's cold yeah, blocks. We showed a, showed a clip at Fan Expo from <clears> one of the, the skits. Uh, and I think a lot of people who showed up to our panel assumed it was a Ruby panel because that's oh, what we did sure. last year. And so I saw a lot of like parents in the audience with their young kids. And of course, the clip Chris chooses to show is one with um, a giant penis with a camera on it. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, going around. Yeah. Uncovering some things. Did you come up with that? Uh, no, I didn't actually come up with that one. Okay. I'm not giving away what the actual skit was about, but no. there's a, a I mean, we showed it at it. RTX uh, Austin. Okay. So. If the show does well and the audience likes it, and it goes to a full series, will you eat a can of cat food? Yeah. <laughs> really? A whole can? A can of wet food. Yeah. Do it. You won't be able to get... Shush. What's wrong with you? <laughs> okay. There we go. Shush. You know, we... Bernie has direct control over... Cat food? What, what... Just, <laughs> why would you do that <laughs> after someone says yes? Why would you say? Why would you I think you say yes? It's like you, like you say you can fight any animal with your bare hands. I think you're an idiot. I and don't I think you say I could fight any animal. I said I could live. But you wouldn't live. I wouldn't beat the animal. You wouldn't live against a bear. Yeah, I would. I'd get away. If he had bare hands, he would. <laughs> get out. <laughs> in this country, we have the I right. picked the cat food. I just want to put that out there. But I just want to remind you: in this country, we have the right to bear arms too. So. Bear arms. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody.